I'm Janice Stevenson, and this is Bethel Today, the television program of the Bethel Democratic Town Committee. And today, I'm going to be speaking with our first selectman, Matt Knickerbocker, and hearing a little bit about what's going on in the selectman's office at this point. So, let's get right to it. Hello, Matt. How are you? Good, good. How are you? I'm hanging in there pretty well. Good. Good. So, Tell me, what's going on? Okay, we have, uh, there's an awful lot to talk about tonight. Let, okay. me, let me start with uh, probably not the biggest thing that I want to lead with tonight, but it's an important date coming up. And okay. as, we, as we tape tonight, of course, this might go into reruns. We you hope. Know, yeah, we hope <laughs> it gets picked up in syndication. But there's an important town meeting coming up on June 15th, which will be a Tuesday night. Uh, open town meeting in the Hurgen Center in Room A at 7 p.m. And it's a very critical town meeting because we are going to be uh, voting to approve two things. Uh, replacement boilers for Johnson School, which are very, very desperately needed, mm -hmm. and they need to go in this summer. How, before, long, uh, go ahead. how long has it been since the boilers have been... When when were the boilers that are there now originally put into that building? When the building was built. Which was in? Uh, the 70s, I okay. think. So, uh, I, I'm, I'm, so in I'm, other words, this is long overdue. This is long overdue. Okay. They've been uh, held together with uh, baling wire and spit and band-aids for some gum? time. Yes, <laughs> chewing gum. And uh, it's time to do that. The, right. the Board of Finance approved that expenditure. Uh, that will probably go to a short-term bond, which is neither here nor there, but we do need to have a town-wide vote okay. on that to, to approve that. So that's item number one. Item number two, and this is very critically important in terms of its timing, is that we need a town-wide vote to approve the new lights for the football field. Uh, now, just to give people an idea, of the, there's, there's an excellent financing plan on this that will literally not cost the town um, any amount of money until not next year, but the year after that. Okay. So we're, we're literally talking about the fiscal year 2011 or 2012 before the first payment is due, and then the town could refinance the project and take advantage of our super super credit rating anyway, and Good. and get a really get a credit get a interest rate that's below one percent on wow. these things. Wow, that is fabulous. But the reason we have to do this now is that uh, as our residents may have already read several months ago. Uh, an extremely generous family is donating a million dollars to refurbish the entire track um, and put in new facilities, a new uh, pavilion for storage of track and field and football gear and so on and so forth. And in creating this new track, you have to take out the old poles. Yes, I did hear that. The old lights that have been failing for years, shutting themselves off in the middle of games, sometimes sending people home in the middle of games Ugh. because they can't be restarted. Right. right. They have to be pulled out of the ground. And what we've discovered is that the old wooden telephone poles that hold up those old lights are in such bad shape. They're, they're so rotted. R really, a good windstorm could bring them down right Ew. now. Yeah, that's they're, bad. They're 33 years old. The lighting at field level is unsafe. Uh, the uh, sports authorities have been um, complaining about that for years. So this gives us state-of-the-art lighting that will save us $60,000 over the first 10 years in terms of electricity costs. And Do so we on. get any kind of, I know that in the past when, when things have been changed in the town, yeah. that there's actually been like rebates from power companies. Is that kind of thing going on at this no. point? Or is it just straight savings? The, the, it's straight savings. And the, the reason that there's no other grants or, or rebates available to us, uh, there, there are two reasons. Number one is that the these these are so many years past their useful life. Oh, okay. You normally get 20 years out of wooden poles if you're lucky. They've been there for 33 wow. years. Right. So the, the various agencies that give grants are saying, look, you guys should have replaced these things anyway. So, you know, okay. sorry, but you're not eligible. The other, the other reason is that uh, there are sometimes grants available for significant power savings because, right. you know, keeping, right. keeping the stress off the energy grid. That's not the case in, th in this particular instance because even though the lights are many times more efficient, we're putting more light down on field level. And just to give you an idea of, of how much we need there, to play lacrosse at, at night, wow. you need 50-foot wow. candles, candles of illumination at field level. Right now we have 19. Wow. So. The, there's going to be a lot more intensity, so, so we're still going to see savings, though. So okay, and so part of what's going to happen, it sounds like, if that's 
like for example the difference with night lacrosse games I'm imagining that we haven't really had any night lacrosse games no. in Bethel no so so the field is actually going to become more useful it, to the community yes this this will uh, become much higher uh, highly utilized much more utilization than, yeah. than we've had in the past now it does other things too uh, a lot of our residents uh, like to walk the track sure. in the evening. Sure. Um, this will provide security lighting all the way around the track, very high efficiency security lighting. It will also fill in those darkened areas where the, we've had vandalism trouble. Good. So it, Good. it's a it's the right time to do it, it's the right price, so I right. encourage people to come out and support that. One last thing about that, but because I know you have other things you want to talk about, I, um, in talking about the fact that this is going to be on the 15th with some other parents that I know, have heard that, that parents of particularly 8th graders are concerned, mm -hmm. and they did ask, could this be moved? Yeah. Could you just talk about what goes on with the, the um, scheduling of a town meeting that makes it so hard to actually move it? Right, well, uh, under a town meeting form of of government, the legislative body in the town is the electorate. Every elect every registered voter in town is part of the legislative body, as opposed to say a city council or a, a senate or something like right, that. Right. Sure. So, for any kind of a purchase that's over a hundred thousand dollars, or actually over thirty thousand dollars, we have to have the legislative body approve it. Uh, it has to go into a notice in the paper 10 days prior to the meeting. You, you have to pick that date. Um, now, we, we did receive notice after we set the, the town meeting date for the 15th that that was the moving up ceremony for the BMS parents. Now, unfortunately, we, we could pick another date, but we would, it, we'd have to go through that process all over again. It would be at least two to three weeks after the 15th. And the problem we have is that we are literally on an hour by hour time you table. You need to get it approved so you can get the construction going right. so you're because done before school starts in the fall. That's, well, not only before school starts, the, the, the poles, these, are gonna, these new lights are going to go up on 80 foot poles and they need to go into place before the new track is put down ah, because once, so have, the, once the track is put down you can't drive across it, you can't put a crane on it because that would destroy the track. Right. So if we waited three weeks to, to do this over again, we'd be having no night football games until about November 1st, oh. so we, we can't oh. afford the delay. Yeah. So yeah. I would just encourage, I, I, I'm really gre grateful that the B BMS parents want to participate in this, I'm thankful for that. We're going to have to get the high school parents out. To, <laughs> okay. You know, and, and really, every member of the community that sure. wants to see a, a you know a state of the art facility there, this is a really really good deal for Bethel. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'm ready. Okay, fifteenth. Yep. Fifteenth. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Meeting room A. Meeting room A. Virgin Municipal Center. That's right. Got it. All right. right. Moving on, what would you like to talk about now? I would like to talk about the article that appeared in today's newspaper about the road construction okay. program that I recently announced to the Board of Selectmen. This is a five-year plan that we're... Uh, Four-year plan. Four-year plan. Uh, this will rebuild 31 miles of roadway. Um, it is, and, and I gotta tell you, uh, starting from one year ago this month when I began campaigning for the position of first selectman, uh, going door to door around town and expecting to hear, you know, okay, we have, we're gonna, I'm going to hear about some tax issues. I'm going to hear about <laughs> property value issues and revaluation. But no. But well, I heard a little bit of that, but nowhere near as much as I thought I would. And what I heard universally was, what are you going to do about these roads? They have gotten to be so bad. Something needs to be done. Um, since taking office on December seventh. I would say not a week goes by without anywhere from three to five phone calls. In fact, I'll even tell you that uh, about a month ago I had a gentleman come into the office, just he was there on town business, and he saw the door was open, he walked into my office and he says, would you please go for a ride with me? Would you get in my car and go for a ride with me? I, I want to drive you up Chestnut Ridge Road so you can experience oh, how bad this is. Oh my gosh. And it's and I, I, I assured him that I had just come back from a, a meeting in Reading the day before at the Reading Police Department and I came down Chestnut Ridge Road and I said, sir, I, I, you don't need to, I, I appreciate the offer, I don't need to ride with you, I know how bad it is. But this is probably Complaint number one, job number one, top priority in the town in terms of our infrastructure, sure. we have to fix this. Now let me talk a little bit about how we got into this pickle. Okay. 
the town of Bethel for the for at least the past ten years that I can find records for, and maybe longer than that, has allocated about a half a million dollars in its annual budget for road reconstruction. And is that a reasonable amount? No. At a starting point, okay. At, at, at some point, more than a decade ago, it might have been reasonable. Okay. Um, the town of Bethel owns 84 miles of roads okay. that, that it's responsible for. That does not include the state-supported roads like okay. 302, 53, and so on. Um, 58. In, 58. Well, 53 and 58. No, I understand. It's just that 58 is the one that's, that's the, yeah. close to me. But <laughs> <Right>. go ahead. <laughs> uh, so, assuming that your starting point is that your roads are in pretty good shape, which is not necessarily a given, but let's right. just say that they are, you really need to be prepared to repave over time about seven or eight miles a year to right. keep it. And so you're, you're going to, as, as roads get old, they, the first five years are pretty good, then they're going to start to, the asphalt's going to shrink and crack, you're going to start putting some hot patch, and then you get potholes, put a little bit of cold patch in the winter. When they get to be about ten years old, you really need to think about at least tack coating the top, which is putting another layer over the top. Okay. And then when that gets a little bit older and the surface can no longer hold it, then you really need to get in one of those big machines and you grind it right down to the sub-material right. and you start over. Now, ten years ago the cost of repaving a road was, uh, the, the material was about $35 a ton. Okay. Today it's over $85 a ton and yet what we've allocated for roads Hasn't has changed never changed. All. How many tons, and, and this may be completely out of left field, about how many tons would it take to do Chestnut, Chestnut Ridge, the part that's in really horrible shape? Well, let me give you a better number than that. Okay. Um, that is about 1.56 miles, and you can, about one, one and a half miles will cost you three hundred to $360,000 per mile. So, okay. so you can okay. uh, upwards of 360 per mile when you, okay. when you when you need to mill and repave all the way down. So you can do the math on that. If you, Absolutely. If you, if you set aside half a million dollars, you're not even getting two miles. No, of road. You're, you're getting about two and a half. If if, if you got some roads that are not such bad shape, you're going to get about two and a half, two miles. And as I said, we've got 31 miles of roads that are in serious disrepair. And I'm not talking about you've got some potholes. We've, we, we're, when we do 31 miles of road, we're still going to have some roads with potholes that can be repaired. That's that's a whole separate budget. Sure. But this is the stuff that is, uh, this is uh, Chestnut Ridge, it's Weed Road, Walnut Hill Road, Quaker Ridge Road, the ones where you know the drainage drain things are sinking in, yeah. they are literally cratered and they're difficult to drive on. Yes. Uh, there really is no other way to do this aside from doing a bond issue to to pay for our roads and get these things caught up. Now let me talk a little bit about that. Um, as everybody has read over the past few months, Bethel has improved its bond rating in the last year Two. tremendously. Uh, we are double A plus by wow. uh, Moody's and Fitch. Mm -hmm. Uh, double, I, I can't remember, the, the third one is, we're one notch from the best in, in Moody's and, and Fitch, and then w w two notches down from best in the other one, um, Standard and Poor's. Right. Um, this qualifies us for extremely good uh, financing rates, and we're in a very fortunate position right now, where right now as we sit here, over the, if you project out the town's debt load over the next 10 years, our debt load falls every year it gets lower and lower. So as we go through our budgeting process next year and the year after, the part of our, our town budget that we have to pay for basically, you know, making payments on stuff, the sure. way homeowners make their mortgage payment, sure. drops That's off, going down. It, sure. it goes down. So what I've done is I've structured this bond issue to cover the, to repair the roads over four years and add a little tiny bit of debt back in each year in a way that still allows the debt load to, to fall. Go down. Okay. So it'll it'll fall like this instead of like this. Sure. So what this means is we can literally because of our timing and because of our good financial position, we can pay for fixing these roads and not have a penny of new taxes need to be raised to, to go to do, do the that, roads. To do the roads. That would be great. That's and great. You know, the, so this still has to go. Uh, it, it was presented to a joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance last week. Mm -hmm. uh, the Board of Selectmen has to uh, uh, 
deliberate it and, uh, and come up with a final number. The number I presented uh, was was no more than 10 million to cover all of the roads in this investment in the in, in the road package. It would probably actually be less than that. It, you know, it, if we did all 31 miles plus a few really bad parking lots like the the YMCA building where our uh, our preschool right. program exists right, right now is in <laughs> It's it's literally sinking into uh, the substrate. Of, yeah, it's it's in it's in terrible shape. Uh, also, a couple of uh, school building parking lots that haven't been rebuilt in 30, 35 years mm -hmm. would be covered mm -hmm. by this. So um, again, that's the most it would cost. It it would still allow our debt load to fall. The mood, the rating agencies say that any town that has a debt load that's below 10 percent of its operating budget is in excellent shape. Today, ours is seven and falling. Wow. So. That's, that's not that, not that we all want to run out no. and spend, say, woohoo, we got money, but we can afford to fix these roads. Right, because if, if we can maintain, you know, basically where, where we sit. Right. So uh, just to give you, I mean, this is the, the, the list of roads is two pages long in little tiny type, but <laughs> like, as I said, it includes uh, Williams, uh, Chestnut, Weed, Walnut Hill, Quaker Ridge, Reservoir is another. Oh, yeah, really, Reservoir is. Yeah, big one. That's a. So, um, uh, so I, I encourage our residents to uh, to watch the newspapers. I'm sure that there'll be deliberations by the board of selectmen, board of finance. There will be a public hearing on this. Mm -hmm. We're targeting a referendum sometime in uh, probably by the end of August okay. to, to approve this. And we could really, at that level, we could still get started on them this year. That would be great. Yes, that would be great. Absolutely. So that's roads. That's roads. Okay. So we just got through talking about the road plan, so what would you like to discuss what, next? Well, the, those are all the details on, uh, I think I need to give this thing a name, so I'm going to call it the Bethel Road Recovery Plan. How's okay. That? So all that's right. good marketing name. But there is one more element to, to roads in general, okay. which is not specifically part of that plan, but that's the repaving of Old Hollyville Road, which is actually scheduled to start within a week or so. Uh, and th now that is 100% funded by the federal government under the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, otherwise known as the Stimulus Bill, otherwise known as No Charge to the Town of Bethel. So uh, okay. it, it would be nice if we could get our hands on more of that, but only certain types of roads qualify. Old Hollyville happens to qualify because it connects two major state highways, which is Route 6, and, which is a federal highway, and uh, Route 302. So it qualifies. So this will this will be nice when we're done with it this summer. Uh, and this will, again won't cost the town of Bethel a penny. The uh, old Hollyville section from the big Y up at that intersection mm -hmm. will be re completely milled down and repaved all the way down to where it ended last summer. So that okay. whole section will be in much better shape. Good. So that's it. That's for roads. great. Okay. Right. So that's roads. Yep. So what, what next? What next? Well, there were a couple of comments in uh, some of the blogs I noticed. Uh, whatever happened to the Whittlesea Bridge, the Whittlesea Plum Trees Bridge realignment? Yeah. And, and this goes way back, but let me tell you the story. I had a, had a meeting with state DOT officials about three weeks ago in Hartford. And uh, there are two bridge projects that have been held up for a decade one is the Walnut, Walnut Hill Bridge, yes. which is now in such bad shape that it has a weight limit that now even... I, actually, I was um, chaperoning a field trip and wondered what the heck the driver was doing when he yes. went over to Rockwell because he couldn't go that's over the bridge. That's right. You can't, you can't t even take a loaded school bus over exactly. the bridge. Exactly. In fact, you can't even take an empty school bus over the bridge. And the bridge is, in, in, is it, it's so weak that the state may actually lower the, the weight limit down to six tons. Wow. And, we, and it, it creates enforcement problems because our police force has to keep an eye on it. Uh, trucks will be coming into town. And, you know, the GPS unit that they have on board doesn't tell them about the weight limit. It just vectors them over that bridge, so the police have to turn them around, and it's a mess. Yep. Anyway, to make a long story short, um, let's talk about Walnut Hill first. Okay. It has been held up mostly by environmental concerns for quite a few years. Uh, the town has had to go back and redesign it several times to allow uh, wildlife to, to f go upstream mm -hmm. through this, this particular design. Um, the DEP is almost finished with its evaluation. There, there needs to be a biological survey, field survey done looking for a rare form of rare species of turtle. 
Uh, the state doesn't think they're there, but they're obligated to go take do the survey, and they have to do it at a certain time of year right. in order to find out if they have it. So that means that the Walnut Hill Bridge will be slated for reconstruction one year from now. Okay. Two years from now is when we expect to be able to, uh, and again, this is, state, this is a state problem. The town of Bethel has done nothing wrong. We've not dragged our feet, but the, uh, the state has, uh, is about ready to uh, complete the design on the uh, Plum Tree Road and Whittlesey Road realignment. Now, anybody who drops a kid off at school today knows that you've got this funky intersection where Very. you come up Walnut Hill, you have to make a sharp right across this nasty little bridge. It's very narrow. The school buses turn into the other lane. It's a nasty bottleneck every day of the school year. And then you turn left to go up to the school complex. When this is done, that whole intersection will be realigned into a straight four-way intersection with an angled bridge. There'll be a pedestrian walkway with pedestrian signals, and that intersection will connect with the new Safe Routes to Schools program, which will begin this summer building a sidewalk that runs from that intersection all the way down past the police station and up as far as Plumtree Heights subdivision. Oh, that's nice. Now, with that, just, just out of curiosity, where else will sidewalks be going in? Because I'm assuming that will not be the only location. Uh, well, there's already a sidewalk that, that, that connects... Uh, that runs up to the school complex from that sure. intersection. Sure, yes, that I knew. So um, those are the only sidewalks that we have right now. Okay. Um, you well, know, New England doesn't do sidewalks yeah, that I well. Yeah, I know. Uh, it, it's, it's, ne it's been in the building code for a long time that if you build a new piece of property, you're, you're required to put a sidewalk in front of it. So that's why you see things like sidewalks that go nowhere. Right. <laughs> like in right. front of Target store, you know, it, it starts here and it stops there and there's no place else to go. So eventually, 100 years from now, there'll be sidewalks everywhere unless we decide we want to spend money on putting sidewalks in on top of that. Right. But, uh, you I know, that... don't see that happening. I, I don't see that happening, <laughs> but... The, but uh, the safe road, safe routes to schools program is paid for by a federal grant, and uh, you know we will always look for opportunities to do that to rebuild some of that infrastructure sure. where where it makes sense. Now the other cool thing is that the uh, just this past weekend, the Bethel Land Trust recently opened its brand new boardwalk that goes through the East Swamp area. Yes. So for those of our viewers who don't know where that is, that will that intersection with Whittlesey. You know, mm -hmm. uh, as I just said, the safe routes goes to that intersection, then the sidewalk goes up to the school. There's a trail that be, will begin at that, just about that intersection, cut through the swamp with a nice, um, it's a, I don't know what the material is, but it's that type of decking that, that never rots. Right. Boardwalk that cuts, that runs parallel with Walnut Hill Road, goes all the way through Flats uh, East Swamp, to Bennett Pond and then goes into McCower Park. Oh, that's wonderful. So there'll be like an, what we're doing over time is, is creating a trail system where right. you, can, you can go from the schools down to McCower Park up to town. You know, eventually, someday in the future, I, I, sure. I hope to have everything connected with sidewalks too to make it all safe. Yeah, well, I, I know I, on the other end that there are sidewalks up above the high school yeah. that'll take you in on Greenwood Avenue as yeah. well. But you know, in that, that section of uh, Plum Tree Road, I see I see school kids walking all, all the, the time. time, all, all the, the time. time. I see I see people who prefer to walk downtown to buy groceries walking along on the side of the road. So, sure. You know, it, it's not going to be uh, one of the first things we do, but I mean, long term, we do have to address pedestrian safety yep. issues up in that area, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. So uh, that, that those are exciting changes, and I think that's going to make have a big impact on uh, quality of life in Bethel. Yeah, I think so, too. So we're coming towards sort of the end of our time, and I was just wondering, any last minute things that you want to bring in and mention? Um, yeah, I would, I would also like to see, as part of the Safe Routes to Schools program, uh, Bethel begin moving toward getting a designation called a bicycle-friendly community. And that is something that doesn't really require any money. It simply requires a commitment to education and planning that when you do repave a roadway, you put a bike lane on it and you mark it. And again, there's there are grant funds available to, uh, to defray that cost. How does that work? For example, um, Sunset Hill Road is, a, is where I'm located, and, and they repaved that one a couple of years ago. Right. And in the process, because it was a very old road and we had spots where it was only 17 feet wide, they, they did widen it out. Right. 
When you go to do that and they put in the bike lane, mm -hmm. do they have to then take the road a little bit wider still, or do they sort of somehow try to work within that? They, they can work within it. it and, you know, uh, Mr. Dibble, our highway supervisor, has a, tells a great story about how our roads evolved, which they were, they were a cow path, and then they made yes. them wider for a horse and buggy, and they made them wider for a Model T, and then they made them wider for what we have today. Right. So they've kind of evolved. So you get everything from, you know, a little squeezed 17 foot yeah, exactly. up to a full 28 foot you know super highway exactly. size so a lot of our roads as there we do have part, as part of that road recovery plan the ones that are super narrow will be widened to the to the right sure. area so sure. we can accommodate bike lanes again it's just simply thinking about it ahead of time and saying where's the best place to put it where's the safest way to put sure. it how do we mark it and then we let people know that they're going to share the roadway it's it's really not that hard yeah and I, it does make sense mm -hmm. you know consider that we've got one of the major bike companies based here in Bethel that probably we really ought to do that we have th yes we have not only that uh, we have one of the most active uh, cycling communities in the state yeah um, we have a lot of clubs. We have a lot of people that commute to work, uh, commute to the train station. Mm -hmm. uh, right now I'm looking for some grant money to put bike lockers in the train station, which is uh, nicer than a plain old bike rack because you can, you know, if you have a nice bike or you, it, yeah, it's you a rainy day, you open up the locker, you put it in, you drop your quarters in or whatever, and you so, lock it up. So we're going to be the Amsterdam of New England. Is that where we're going with? I don't think <laughs> no, we're, we're going to get quite there. But we're <laughs> but r r right now the only the community in the entire state of Connecticut that has a designation of a bike friendly community is the town of Sims Simsbury, out of several hundred around the country. So we're wow. uh, Connecticut does not do a good job of that. But as a, at a grassroots grassroots level, we can do a better job and we can provide a safer route for our kids to ride to school, people to ride to work. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Sure. Thank so we've you. been speaking with our first selectman, Matt Knickerbocker, and hearing some of the good things that are happening now in our town government. And this has been Bethel Today. I'm Janice Stevenson. This show is sponsored by the Bethel Democratic Town Committee. And if you're interested in more information about that, you can also visit BethelToday.com. I think it's .com. Yes. On the web and find out more about what we're up to. And Matt, thank you so much for being with us Thanks, this Janice. evening. Thanks, Janice. It's a pleasure. And again, I'm Janice Stevenson. Goodbye.